webinar on park accessibility features and accommodation for students with disabilities. This webinar was recorded on March 4, 2015 by TNTP on behalf of the DC Office of the State Superintendent of Education. Our hope for this webinar is that you will leave the session able to select the appropriate accommodations for students with disabilities in your schools on the park assessment, and that you will be able to consider the appropriate factors when you are faced with specific situations involving the provision of accessibility features and accommodations to your students. First, let's look at administrative considerations for all students. All students are required to participate in the assessments, with narrow exceptions for English language learners in their first year at a U.S. school, and certain students with disabilities who have been identified by the Individualized Education Program Team, or IEP Team, to take their state's alternate assessment. All other students will participate in the Park ELA and Mathematics, Performance-Based, and End-of-Year Assessments. First, we will explore a series of general administrative considerations that you should take into account when planning to administer PARC in your schools. As far as test locations and scheduling are concerned, students are generally tested in their regular classroom following the test administration schedule for the grade and content area being administered. However, the principal has the authority to schedule students in testing spaces other than regular classrooms and at different scheduled times, as long as all requirements for testing conditions and test security are met as set forth in the Test Administrator Manual. School-based teams, including the IEP Team, 504 Plan Coordinator, or English Language Learner Team, may determine that any student can receive one or more of the test administration considerations listed here regardless of the student status as a student with a disability or an English language learner. Note that many of these considerations were previously restricted to those students with IEPs or 504 plans. That is not the case with PARC. These administrative considerations apply to all students. Next, let's look at accessibility features. In the next section of this webinar, we are going to discuss accessibility features that can be made available for any and all students when they take the PARC assessment. On the PARC computer-based assessments, some accessibility features are built into all tests. Accessibility features can be used by any student taking the PARC assessment. This includes students with and without disabilities, gifted students, English language learners, and English language learners with disabilities, anyone. Those are intended for all students. They are not classified as accommodations by PARC. But if they are in an IEP, they must be treated as accommodations. This means that if an accommodation on a student's IEP is called an accessibility feature by PARC, then the student must receive that accessibility feature on PARC. Students really must have practice with these features prior to PARC administration if they're going to use them on the PARC assessment. Providing these features without prior practice risks doing students a disservice by complicating the testing experience for them. Accessibility features are intended to benefit a wide range of students and are available to any student at his or her discretion during testing. Practice tests that include accessibility, accessibility features are being made available for teachers and students throughout the year. Please note that some accessibility features do not even show up on the PNP if they do not need to be requested in advance, but not all. This crosswalk shows park accessibility features and their corresponding names in SEDS. You can see here, for example, that adjusting color contrast is a feature that is available to all students taking the test, but that there is no corresponding name in SEDS. 
this particular option must be identified in advance on a student's PNP. This list continues on the next slide. On this slide, there is another interesting example. As we look at some additional accessibility features, we can see that the line reader tool does not have a name in SEDS and does not need to be identified in advance on the PNP. By the way, at the end of this webinar, there's a link to the full crosswalk for all SEDS accommodation. Throughout the rest of the webinar, we will encounter a number of cases that you may face as you prepare to implement accessibility features and accommodations on PARC. We'll attempt to provide as much clarification here as possible and refer you to additional resources where necessary. In this first case, here is a school that truly has its students' best interests at heart, but may not have considered the potential implications of their decisions around accessibility features. This school is considering activating all available accessibility features for all students. In this case, though the school means well, it should take great care when selecting accessibility features and not just check all when it comes time to select which ones to implement. Individual student needs should be considered when choosing accessibility features. Schools should only implement additional features after careful consideration of these needs. Schools should ensure that students have been exposed to and have practiced with any accessibility features to be used on PARC prior to testing. Although these features are available to all students, recent research suggests that providing too many tools on screen may lead to ineffective use of the tools or a negative impact on student performance. Here is a second case study. A school is attempting to understand the difference between embedded features and other accessibility features. Which accessibility features are required to be specifically indicated on the PNP and which are already built into the system? This is a good question. There are 19 separate accessibility features available to all students, which are listed on pages 22 through 25 of the Park Accommodations Manual. These are available to all students, and 15 out of the 19 are automatically built into the TestNav platform and therefore do not show up on the PNP as an option. Students can utilize these at any time, but again, they need to practice them prior to testing so they are comfortable with them, otherwise it won't be very helpful. The other four accessibility features specifically need to be selected on the PNP. These include answer masking, color contrast background font text, text-to-speech for math, and human reader signer for math. The PMP needs to know that these features need to be uploaded to a student's test prior to testing. Also, there are six additional accessibility features that are classified as administrative considerations and are covered earlier in this webinar. These, built, these six features are not built into the test app platform. Rather, they are things that a school has to decide ahead of time in order to make scheduling work, such as small group testing, separate location, time of day, etc. These six features must also be identified in advance on the PNP. Next, let's look at what PARC actually classifies as accommodations. Now we will discuss specific accommodations that are chosen in advance for students with disabilities based on their IEP or Section 504 plan. Accommodations are intended to reduce and or eliminate the effects of a student's disability and or English language proficiency level. However, Accommodations should never reduce learning expectations by reducing the scope, complexity, or rigor of an assessment. Although there are four groups of students who may receive accommodations, today's webinar focuses on students with IEPs or Section 504 plans, so students in the first two categories, as well as ELLs who also have disabilities. That's the fourth group you can see on this diagram. <laughs> 
there are a number of core principles that we should keep in mind when selecting accommodations. First, accommodations exist to enable students to participate more fully and fairly in instruction and assessment. It can do. Accommodation should be based upon an individual student's needs rather than on the category of a student's disability, their level of English language proficiency alone, level of or access to grade level instruction, amount of time spent in a general ed classroom, current program setting, or availability of staff. Accommodation should be based on a documented need in the instruction assessment setting and should not be provided for the purpose of giving the student an enhancement that can be viewed as an unfair advantage. Accommodations for students with disabilities should be described and documented in the student's appropriate plan, i.e. either the IEP or the 504 plan. Students who are English language learners with disabilities qualify to receive accommodations for both students with disabilities and the English language learners. Accommodations for English language learners should be described and documented per your LEA's process. Accommodation should become part of the student's program of daily instruction as soon as possible after completion and approval of the appropriate plan. Accommodation should not be introduced for the first time during the testing of a student. And finally, accommodation should be monitored for effectiveness and they should also be used, if allowable, on all assessments, not just state assessments. There are three types or categories of accommodations within PARC. Presentation accommodations benefit students with disabilities that affect reading standard print, typically as a result of a physical, sensory, cognitive, or specific learning disability. Response accommodations are designed to benefit students who have physical, sensory, or learning disabilities who have difficulties with memory, fine motor skills, sequencing, directionality, alignment, and organization. Finally, timing and scheduling accommodations benefit students who need additional time to process information or write responses or those who use special devices or equipment. Please note that for both students taking computer-based assessments and those taking paper-based assessments, accommodations must be identified in advance, both in the student's IEP or 504 plan and in the student's PNP during the test registration process. Please also note that changes in how the time is organized, such as use of frequent breaks or testing at a specific time of day, these are test administration considerations that are available to any student, as covered earlier in this webinar. And for those of you familiar with SEDS, there is a fourth accommodation category called setting, but in the world of parks, those are part of the group of administrative considerations, such as testing in alternate locations or testing in a small group setting. We see here that the names of some park accommodations match the accommodation names in SEDS. For example, the closed captioning accommodation. In other cases, such as the tactile graphics accommodation, there are slight variations in the names used. Again, a link to the full crosswalk, crosswalk can be found at the end of this webinar. This slide shows more of the presentation accommodations, and we see more accommodations here whose park names closely mirror the names in SEDS. Now we move into response accommodations, and let's note that their nomenclature is that the ELA response accommodations for park can be provided in four different modalities, speech to text, human scribe, human signer, or external assistive technology device. In SEDS, these four modalities are all lumped together. However, on the PNP, the user should select which of the four options is the most appropriate for the student. Also, as an additional note of clarification, for students whose IEPs were finalized using the old DC-CAS terminology, the IEP might say oral response or dictated response to examiner, which is equivalent to these PARC ELA response accommodations, and therefore the IEP does not need to be amended. Once again, we see here that the ELA response accommodations include four separate modalities, but instead they are all lumped together. Please ensure that PNP identifies which one of these four types of oral response accommodations the student will be receiving. 
Finally, looking at the timing and scheduling accommodations, it's really important to note that administering a single test session to a child over several days is not permitted on PARC. Here's another case study. A school is concerned about providing accessibility features to students with disabilities who don't have, have those features identified in their IEP. Let's take a look at this one on the next slide. In this case, the school should remember that park accessibility features are available to all students, those with disabilities and those without. The purpose of documenting an accommodation on the IEP is to ensure that the student receives this accommodation on all assessments, not just the park. If the student truly needs a math read aloud feature, not just for park, but also for all other assessments that he takes, then it needs to be on the IEP. However, if the student does not need it for all assessments, and it's only being provided as an accessibility feature for park purposes, then it does not need to be on the IEP. If an accommodation is listed in a student's IEP, that accommodation must be provided, either as an accommodation or as an accessibility feature, depending on how PARC classifies it. This next case study introduces us to how we implement the extended time accommodation. In this case, the key issue is relatively simple. Make sure each test section is administered within a single day because students will not be able to return to a previously started section on a second day of testing. This applies to all students, even those with the extended time accommodation. Again, students who receive the extended time accommodation have until the end of the school day to complete a single test unit. This next case study gets to the question of which students are eligible for read aloud accommodation. PARC offers a read aloud feature in four separate modalities, text to speech software, ASL video, human reader signer, and screen reader for visual impairment. You can see here that there are different guidelines for read aloud accommodations on the math assessment and for read aloud accommodations on the ELA assessment. The read aloud accommodations for PARC math assessments are considered accessibility features and any student can qualify for this feature at the discretion of school administrators. This must be identified in advance on the PMP. Additionally, it should be noted that this accessibility feature may not benefit all students because read aloud on a math section can potentially hinder some students. Careful consideration of individual student needs is strongly recommended when considering this accessibility feature. Reading the math test aloud to an entire classroom of students in a blanket manner is not appropriate. As for ELA, read aloud accommodations for Park ELA assessments are considered accommodations and are only available for a very small number of students with disabilities who meet the criteria set forth on page 34 of the Park Accommodations Manual, and also Appendix D. Providing an ELA read aloud accommodation to a qualifying student who has this accommodation in his or her IEP will not invalidate the test unless the student does not meet the criteria set forth on page 34 of the Park Accommodations Manual and Appendix D. This case study examines assistive technology. In this case, the answer is relatively straightforward. The park should not be the first time that a qualifying student receives any accommodation. As such, the school should already have procured the tools necessary to accommodate qualifying students on other assessments per their IEPs as the IEP team likely previously determined that the student needed the accommodation and the related technology. For example, if a student's IEP states that the student is to use a word prediction device, that student should already be using such a device in the classroom and or on assessment for his or her IEP prior to park administration. <laughs> 
Calculator accommodations were always tricky on the DC cache. So let's get this one right for part. Within PARC, some math sections allow calculators for all students, while others do not. The PARC calculator policy outlines the specific devices that may be used on which section in which grades. For students with a disability that severely limits or prevents their ability to perform basic calculations, there is an accommodation that permits calculation devices on non-calculator sections. However, this accommodation is only designed for a very small number of students. For these students, the testing platform will not provide a calculator on these sections, and the school will need to provide the appropriate calculator. Ideally, it will be the same calculator the student is familiar with using during regular classroom instruction, but please ensure it meets the calculator policy requirements on page 39 of the PARC manual. Also, please note that the PARC calculator accommodation is actually called Calculation Device and Mathematics Tools and could include a multiplication chart, division chart, or other math manipulatives as prescribed by the IEP or 504 plan. Again, schools should reference the PARC manual, pages 38 to 40, for further details on these very specific guidelines. We want to take a brief moment to address accommodations for English language learners. While additional resources are available on this topic, our focus today is in cases where English language learners also have disabilities. In such cases, these students qualify for accommodations for students with disabilities as well as those for English language learners. Park Manual, beginning on page 44, for additional information. In sum, the range of features in the PARC Accessibility System should empower you to provide the optimal testing environment for every student and allow each student to put his or her best foot forward. So, how do you know which accessibility features and accommodations to select for your students? PARC outlines a five-step process for putting all of the pieces together around accessibility features and accommodations. You can find more information on page 50 of the PARC manual. Step one of the five-step process lays out general expectations. So what do we mean by bullet one? The ESEA and IDEA require that all students with disabilities be administered state assessments, either with or without accommodations, or through an alternate assessment. The results of those assessments are intended to hold schools accountable for the academic performance of all students. As for Bullet 2, the Common Core State Standards are educational targets for students to learn at each grade level or course, and teachers should regularly ensure that students are working towards grade level learning standards by using instructional strategies appropriate for each student based on individual needs, strengths, and challenges. Step 2 tells us some of the things we should not do. Modifications, as contrasted with accessibility features and accommodations, involve changes in the park assessment or in the conditions in which a student takes the assessment that would result in unacceptable changes in what the assessment is designed to measure, e.g. reducing or changing expectations for students. Modifications could also provide an unfair advantage to a student. Therefore, modifications are not permitted on the park assessments. On this slide, you see a non-exhaustive list of modifications that would invalidate results on PARC. For more information, see pages 51 to 52 of the PARC manual. Step 3 begins the process of deciding what each student needs. According to the guidance in the PARC manual, the decision-making process should consider at least the following three factors. First, examples of student characteristics and learning needs to consider, which include disabilities, 
language proficiency, accommodations used in classroom instruction and assessment. Second, when we consider individual assessment characteristics, we're talking about knowledge about what tasks are required on park assessment and ways to remove physical and other barriers to student ability to perform those tasks. So we should ask the following questions for factor two. What are the characteristics of the assessment and what will the tasks and items look like? Are the assessment tasks similar to classroom assessment tasks? And does the student have the opportunity to practice similar tasks prior to testing? Does the student use an accessibility feature and or accommodation for a classroom task that is allowed for similar tasks on the park assessment? And finally, do other barriers exist that could be removed by using accessibility features and or accommodations that are not already offered or used by the student? Step four guides us through the process. Some of the key takeaways here are that student, P, student PNP information should be compiled with the names of students, the accessibility features and or accommodations they require, test locations, and staff responsible for administering tests with accessibility features and accommodations. Special educators and English language educators often assist general educators in understanding how to properly provide specific accessibility features and or accommodations. Test administrators must know and understand the requirements for providing accessibility features and or accommodations on park assessments and correctly administer them so that scores are valid. Test administrators should also anticipate whether a student will be allowed extra time to complete the test once the official testing time is ended. Remember, school or district staff will need to enter data into a student's PNP before testing to enable all necessary accessibility features and accommodations and ensure that they are provided on test day. There is a separate OSSI webinar on the PNP process and there's a link to that webinar at the end of this presentation. The final step encourages us to reflect on how we made use of the options available to our students. At the close of testing, schools and LEAs should ask themselves the following questions to guide their future decisions around accessibility features and accommodations at the macro level. important element of step five. Schools should take an even closer look at how accessibility features and accommodations are working for individual students once the testing window is complete. These questions should be considered not just by IEP and 504 team, but by all staff members as they pertain to the testing experience of each individual student. There's more information about step five in the Park Manual on page 53. We've almost reached the end of our presentation. Before you go, take a look at these additional resources provided by OSSI. All three of these resources can be found on the section of the OSSI website called Park Resources. Finally, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to us. For SEDS questions, speak with your LEA Special Ed Coordinator. For ELL questions, you can always contact katie.williams at dc.gov. Don't forget that the complete list of park accommodations and accessibility features is available through the park manual, and you can find that at the OSSI website. And if you just cannot find what you need, you can always reach out to OSSI at ossi.assessment at dc.gov. Thank you. This is the end of the webinar. <laughs>